so long or usually I have, there's a few things that I have always patched up because that's just, I know that I'm going to use it in a certain way. So it's nice to actually just get this brush and give it a little dust down. <laughs> You know, holding the drink above the modular is just giving giving you all a bit of excitement to get the blood pumping, to get you, you know, hyped <laughs> for uh, the next little while. All right, let's get cracking, hey? Pop that down. All right, so this is my modular setup. Uh, the case itself is an Amalgamod case. It's an Australian-based uh, company, which, yeah, they've. if you can see, there's got this bottom panel and then a top panel, and this whole thing sort of, it actually collapses down and is really great. It's portable. It's got lights on the top. Yeah, the sheet, the sheet o o over the gear is really good, um, but there's just like so many little nooks and crannies, you know, in between all of the, uh, all of the knobs and everything that, it's good to just get in there and give them a good wipe out. I mean, I, I, I don't I do not do that very often, but I thought now would be a good time, you know, because maintenance of this stuff, you know, you're going to pay money for it. You might as well look after it. Um, yeah, it's just a paint, a new paintbrush, a brand new paintbrush. So, yeah, giving that a crack. Um, all right. So let's, let's just uh, get really excited here and let's turn this thing on, shall we? Ooh, there's lots of lights and there we go turned on the uh, the lights above so as I just said before this case which is kind of like you know when you're getting started with modular the first thing unfortunately it's so boring but is the case and the case is the thing that holds all the modules now you can actually make one out of cardboard. You can make one out of whatever you want. Um, all you need really is the power supply and then you need something to connect the modules to, which is generally a bus board, which is just a board. Um, I don't have any unplugs to show you, but a bus board and yeah, and the power supply and then the case. And um, I'm gonna do a more introductory modular synth kind of, stream or series um i'm just waiting on a new computer because this one currently it can't handle too much um anyway i'm just going to be reading the comments as we go how many units is that case oh you mean uh like uh the hp the hp is how all right so it's basically uh the hp is like the width of a module and so I, I'm not really good with these. I just freestyle it. But the HP is like the width of a module. And then each row is called 3U. So this is 3, 6, 9, 12U. And I think it's 140 or something HP. Um, yeah, I mean, that stuff is really interesting. If you want to be really, you can be really, really precise and work out, you know, how you want to put your stuff together. But yeah. I don't tend to um, do that very often. I just sort of freestyle it. But if you wanted to, there's a really great website called Modular Grid. And on Modular Grid, you can set up um, an artificial version of your case and you can choose the size and you can choose all the modules. Basically, every module that's ever been made gets put on there and you can put it... You can't use them, but you can put them in there and you can see, you know, what fits in... Uh, in your case, you know, you might start off with a small case thinking, oh, I'll just use this small case and that will be it. But it will expand, I'm sure of it. Um, but yeah, Modular Grid is a good place to start if you want to just, you know, uh, put together what you think things might look like. So that's free to make an account and yeah, I recommend it. It's, it's really fun actually. And also when you have lots of modules and you want to plan how you want to rearrange them, because there's no, there's no uh, way that you have to do it. Um, you know, that helps. You can, before you start unscrewing everything and 
screwing it back in and moving around. It's just a good way to do it quickly. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look at all the modules, shall we? Um, just at any point during this, just jump in the comments. I've got my screen up. I can see the comments and I can see what you're all writing. If you need anything, any information about anything or if there's anything that you don't understand, just write it in the comments and I will get to it. I'm kind of constantly looking up at the screen. So yeah. All right, well, let's go through all my modules really quickly. And then maybe as I patch them, I might get into more depth about them. But I think I'll just go top left to bottom right. So, all right, just got to get myself comfy. Let me know if there's any issues with the stream. My computer sounds like a jet engine at the moment. Okay, so top left, we've got a dual VCA by 2HP. That's a company. They make very, very tiny modules that are very useful and don't take up much space, quite affordable. Um, a VCA is like a very essential piece of kit. I have this VCA, I also have a VCA over here, a quad VCA, but there's this joke that is you can never have too many VCAs because they're very, very useful. And I think basically every single modular rig that you'll see people will have a VCA. So, you know, I won't go into what they do in too much detail right now, but VCA 2HP, right next to that we have, just trying to get it in focus there. It's a noise and a random source and a sample and hold. So this basically, this one here, it outputs two different noise sources, which is just white noise and colored noise, uh, which is very useful for sound sculpting. I use it for hi-hats and snares and also just like, I love white noise. You know white noise. It just sounds like this. But when you start to process that and filter it and, you know, put envelopes on it and everything, it starts to get very interesting. This is also is a, uh, a sample and hold, which is essentially, you can use it as a bit of... Um, I guess like a random source, a source if you want, you might hear, uh, what's a good way to explain a sample and hold in sh in a short amount of time? I'm not gonna bother, but it's a sample and hold. It's basically, I use it as a random source. Um, next to this is my Vactral VCF. It's a filter, a voltage controlled filter. It has three inputs, um, all with individual volume knobs, which is actually, I don't know, Originally, I don't know why I bought this. I've had it for years and I wanted a filter and I just randomly bought this. Um, but it's, I've actually grown to love it quite a bit. It has three inputs. And what I use this for is I use it as a, like a small kind of dedicated drum um, mixer, I guess. Um, so I have like three different... Well, I, use, I often use these uh, noise sources into there. I also use this next one here, which is a drum module. And yeah, it's just, it's just your kind of bread and butter filter. And it's got three inputs. It's got low pass, band pass and high pass. Um, it's, it's good. I don't know. I'll probably replace it at some point, but I'll probably re replace lots of different things. All right. So Ekami's Taiko by ALM. That is a fantastic drum drum module. It's like a drum synth drum module. It's an it's a FM synthesis drum module. Basically, um, you might know FM synthesis if you're into synthesis. <laughs> um, you might know the Yamaha DX7 and those kind of belly um, crazy kind of. It can be quite soft and nice, but it also can be quite psychotic and noisy. Um, it's lots of fun. It's, it's one of my favorite modules. I've had it for a long time and I still don't fully understand what it does because FM synthesis is basically the idea of putting uh, oscillators, mixing oscillators together to create something rather than subtracting. Anyway, uh, Next up is the Mutable Instruments Clouds. Um, this is a an effects 
unit basically. Uh, it has a really nice reverb and it also has a granular sampler. So I can take input, an audio input, and I can basically sample it and scrub between it to create, I don't know, textures and all kinds of fun things. It's it's a pretty classic uh, module. You might've seen it in a few in a few rigs. This is actually a custom faceplate. It's black. Um, normally it's gray. Um, but that's the kind of beauty with modular. It's like everything is so interchangeable. Like people create faceplates, custom faceplates for modules and you can just change them up to make, you know, maybe you want your whole kit to look black or something. It's just a, yeah, a really nice feature of module that I quite like. Next to that, we have a quad VCA. As I was saying before, VCAs are just like very essential building block in uh, modular synthesis. So basically you send audio into it and then you can use another envelope or another voltage source to chew, to control when the sound actually gets amplified and comes through. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, and yeah, over here is essentially it's my mixer, um, the IntelliGel dub mix, uh, which is lots of fun. It's very big. It takes up quite a lot of space in the rack because it's actually this, this, this here is the expander for it. Um, but I really like it. And as uh, you know, over the years, I really wanted to just get everything into the modular system. So it's just easy and I can just pack it down and then I can put, pick it up, go to play a gig, you know, and uh, all I have to do is open it up and plug in one power and the audio outputs. And I love that. It is, you don't need a mixer in your, in your rack. You know, you might be uh, a bit kind of tight for space. In that case, you probably wouldn't use such a big mixer, but um, you know, it's, it's something that I really like. It has aux sends, if you know what they are. Um, it's got three aux sends actually, which for me and the type of music I make, I really love aux sends. And this, yeah, this module is just fantastic for that. It's also got direct outputs. So each, it's got four channels I should have mentioned. <laughs> um, and each of the four channels have a direct output. So if I'm jamming along and something sounds really good, I actually have a sampler down here and I can just, rather than having to unpatch everything, I just go out of these direct outputs into the sampler and record and that's fantastic. Um, underneath is the uh, the aux expander, so that's just another two aux ends, um, lots of controls on all this. And then this dub mix goes into the main output, which is I've just got a, uh, a Pittsburgh modular output, which just has, you know, TS, TRS, regular guitar lead audio cables that go out to the interface. Uh, it also has headphone output, so I can be sending that out and I can also be monitoring myself if I'm playing live and I can't, you know, if the booth monitor or if, you know, if something doesn't sound right, it's good. I can just have my headphones on and I can just hear perfectly what's going on. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen for some time because of the current climate, but um, yeah. And in between here, we have a Dopfer wasp filter. Now this is probably one of the most affordable and just delicious filters that there is. There's some really good features about it. It has a volume knob. So that doesn't really, you know, that doesn't sound that great, but any, you know, any control you have over the volume of audio is awesome, especially in something so small. So that's just a regular filter. I actually have two of those. I've got one over here. I've got one here and I've had them for years. And it's one of those things where I'm like one day I'll replace it, but actually it's great. I love it. You know, it sounds really good. And the resonance, when you crank up that resonance, you know, it just squelches and it sounds fantastic. They're about 150 bucks. So, you know, it's pretty affordable on the uh, modular scale. 
right next to the aux expander, we've got a really tiny mixer. So this is basically I've got three inputs to one output and then another three inputs to one output. Now this is really useful for things that, you know, I don't need to control the volume too much, you know, like drum sounds, if they're a fixed sound, I can just put them in. That's what I do with my, um, my noise. When I, when I use those for percussion, I put white noise and a colored noise into here. Um, and so, yeah, that's, it's just a useful, really tiny mixer that, you know, it has a very simple function and it does it well. Next to this is the IntelliGel plug. Now the plug is a logic module, um, <laughs> which is a little bit more complicated to explain, but basically I use that to, um, create, uh, I guess like dynamic and interesting rhythms. Uh, it's, it's just sends out gates, which are like triggers, which might be, a, you might use a trigger or a gate to start a sample or trigger an envelope or, you know, a gate has a lot of uses. Um, and a logic module, it's basically you're feeding it in two different gate sources and then you're creating, I guess, like more complex rhythms by processing them together. But like I said, I'll get into that in more detail, like <laughs> all this stuff, we got a bit of time. Um, next to that is an expander for this. This is the Quadrax, which is, uh, it's basically an envelope generator. So if you imagine here really in its really basic form, this is just attack, release, attack, release, attack, release, attack, release. So you got four envelopes, obviously you can get much more complicated than that, but that's in its simplest form. It's just an attack and a release. Um, and then, you know, you can put CV into it and you control, control it that way, or, you know, it's got lots of, um, lots of fun features. And next to that is the expander, which at the end of, it creates gates as well. At the end of, you know, the cycle or, you know, the start of the cycle, it just creates uh, more gates, which I can use in different ways. Um, all right, so this is a module that I've had for the longest. It's a bit of an all-in-one stages. Oh yeah, um, look, the stages and the Quadrax are both great. I haven't actually used the stages, but I certainly have seen it a lot and it's fantastic. I've heard nothing but good things. Maybe it's a bit cheaper as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's a little bit cheaper. Anyway, this is my first module and I got this as my first module. Well, it's the IntelliGel Atlantis. And I got this because it's basically a replica of an, a Roland SH-101, which is a very, very classic mono synth, um, which, you know, people like Aphex Twin, Boards of Canada, even Devo have used. And this is just a modular version of it. And it's basically my favorite synth. It's cheaper than buying an SH-101 and it sounds basically exactly the same. I don't think anyone would be able to tell the difference. Now, the cool thing about this is, this is like an all-in-one. This has so much stuff. This has LFOs, this has envelopes, this has an, a noise source, this has three oscillators. This has all of these, you know, all these outputs and inputs that can be used. You can just set this thing to cycle. So it just, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you can, but yeah. You can basically like create quite amazing stuff with just this alone. Um, I love how it sounds and I never get sick of it. And I think the bass lines in my music for the past <laughs> few years have just been this and it's really fantastic. Um, you could pick one up for seven, 800 bucks secondhand and it's like all in one thing. It's really, really cool. Ah, oh, right. Ah, oh, yeah. The modular world has been a bit, a bit difficult for buying stuff at the moment. All right. So that's the top. So we've got mixer, VCA, some clouds, which is effects. We've got a drum module. We've got a filter, some randoms, random sources and some noise. We've got the 
Atlantis, we got envelope generators, we got logic modules, we got filters and outputs. And um, yeah, let's go have a look now at the bottom. All right, so this is the Mutable Instruments Peaks. This thing I've had almost as long as the Atlantis and it's, it's really cool. Uh, it does lots of different things. It's an envelope generator, a generator, so you can have attack decay, uh, attack decay, sustain, release. If you know what that is, I'm assuming you do. If you're watching this, it also has an LFO and it is a kick drum and a snare, um, like an 808 kick and snare, which is awesome. Like you can use it for lots of different things. I usually just use it as envelopes. Um, but yeah. Next to that, we got the IntelliGel Triat, which is an attenuverter. Attenuverter is really good for controlling voltages or inputs that maybe don't have a knob. Um, you know, some of these things, where's a good example? Anyway, off, yeah, there's lots of things it can control. Some of these inputs, like they don't have knobs, right? This thing can be used to control knobs, to control inputs that don't have knobs you can use it to choose the amount of voltage that comes through. Uh, if you want to control something that's going like this and you want it to go like this, you know, and a tenuverter is great for that. I'll get into more details about how I use that a bit later. This is a low pass gate, which I mean, the easiest way to explain that is it's kind of like a VCA. Um, this is actually a, uh, Analog Audience is a Brisbane-based modular company. Um, this was a, I bought this as a kit. Um, so this is very, very cheap. It was very useful, sounds awesome. Um, and yeah, I, was, I soldered that together. I think it costs like 30 bucks or something. Um, next to that is a sequential switch. Um, now sequential switch is awesome. So basically you've got four outputs or four inputs, and then they all, go to the one output or input, if that makes sense. So, I mean, a very easy way to explain this is I, I could have four different melodies going into this and then out of this is just one at a time, one of the melodies at a time. But when I hit, hit it with a trigger or a gate, maybe something from over here, which I've been talking about, these gates or the plug, it changes to the next. So I might have four sequences and then whenever it hit, a trigger hits it, the sequence changes. Or I might have some modulation on a filter. On all of these, they're different modulation and I'm just triggering through to make myself a very complex, some complex modulation. Um, it's very fun. Um, Dopefa is actually the kind of original or one, like in this format of modular synthesis, it's like the original brand. All their stuff is really fantastic and very simple and straightforward. A lot of modules can be really confusing and they can have lots of purposes. Like this one, for instance, which I was just talking about, can be a kick drum, a snare, an LFO and an envelope. You know, that's kind of confusing, uh, I guess, if you don't know much about modular synths because it does so many different things. Uh, it can be a bit overwhelming. But the dope for stuff is very, like, um, utilitarian and just very simple and the function is very obvious and it's called what it does a lot of like for instance plog and quadrax like you're not really going to get too much out of that just on the title alone but a sequential switch that's what it is it's a sequential switch anyway which might actually be confusing but um anyway uh, next up is Immutable Instruments Tides. Um, this is another one of those kind of complex modules that does a couple of different things. Um, I use it for, it's kind of complex. It, 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 it creates like um, waves of uh, LFOs that can kind of change depending on it's the settings, what you're feeding into it. It also is a noise source. It's an oscillator, um, which is really awesome. You know, you can use it as LFO. Um, you can also use it as just like an envelope, like an attack release. You can use it as an oscillator. Um, here is another, uh, this is the low-flung low um, trademark multiple. <laughs> I just got a bit of metal from Bunnings and I just DIY'd this myself. Um, 
which you can do. It's very cheap. Uh, multiple is it basically it's just taking one source. So say you're taking a wave, you know, an LFO, and you're able to use that three times, which is fantastic. Like that's so so useful. That's like multiples are great. They're fantastic. They are so so useful. Um, How's everyone holding up so far? Are you getting confused? <laughs> I'm gonna have a little drink of water. Um, and I guess like with a lot of this stuff, when I actually put it to use, you'll understand almost immediately. Like, oh, okay, I get it now. So if you get a bit confused, don't worry. Or, you know, ask some question. <sighs> I tried to set up the Twitch so that blue square had a chat box, but um, it's just not working. So sorry about that. Anyway. Um, oh, great. Hi to Alex. Um, okay. Here's another one. Let's continue. This is a clock divider. So if you imagine uh, what I do is I have I have a sequencer and it sends a clock to this. It just sends a pulse, which is essentially the tempo, I suppose. You send that a clock and it's it divides it. So in, in sometimes it can be simple, sometimes complex ways, but you know, if I wanna, it's very, very good for just, I guess, mod, modulating, sending gates to different things you know, to trigger stuff that's in time with the tempo. Um, you know, I use this a lot and it costs like a hundred bucks. It's just one of the, it's a dope for, it's one of those things that's just really, really useful. Like a clock divider is just unreal. Um, it's awesome. You know, you can send, so it basically like you send in a clock. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, <laughs> It then can divide that by two, divide that by four, divide it by eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, you know? So immediately you have something that is useful to trigger different things. You might have the tempo of, of a song going in. So, you know, 120 BPM, house music, boom, 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 boom. And on the 128th bar of that tempo, you might send out a gate, which might, you know, trigger an envelope, for instance. Um, anyway, yeah, there's another one of my signature multiples. <laughs> very dodgy. It's not even straight. I cut it in a very, yeah, dodgy way. But it works and I still use it. So, yeah, that was pretty much, I think that would have been like five bucks in materials, which is awesome. Um this thing here is upside down. Uh, shout outs to Luke Durnley, who is an advocate for the upside down module. Um, it's upside down for ergonomic reasons. And this is basically, it, I, I basically have no control over this, but what it does is it has, as you can see, those lights are changing. It's basically got all of these waving LFOs that don't go perfectly in time and they're not fully open. They're just like very subtle movement. The one in the middle takes about 30 minutes to complete a cycle. The one on the left, uh, it's a bit hard explaining it because they're upside down, but one on the left is like 10, 20 seconds. And then the one on the right is like a minute. So if you imagine like, look at all these outputs you've got here, this thing is just so awesome. Um, you can just send that out to all these different things on your module and then it just creates dynamic and, you know, it creates something that, you know, it might be a bit complicated. Like to do what this is doing, you know, you could use say an LFO of peaks going into the, a 10, you know, a 10 verta to change the scale, but, and then to another thing, but that's already like, you know, you've got two, three cables going on. This thing is just really useful. It's like, it's nice to have, subtle movement and variation in your patches and for how small it is it's very useful non-linear circuits it's an australian company um fantastic stuff all right 
Next to that, next to that is the Mutant BD9, which is essentially all that is is a bass drum module uh, designed off the 909. It's a kick drum. That's all it is. That's all it does. But it does it really, really well. It has overdrive, so you can just punch it into like crazy territory. You can make it super subby and long and it's just a really good kick drum module and for me it's like if I'm playing live, I like having something like this because I can go in and do a sound check and I can just tweak this thing till it sounds perfect on a sound system and I've just got this kick drum that is very, you know, adaptable to whatever PA I might be playing on, you know. That's the thing that I really like about it. It's just a really nice kick. I have your old Sloth Chaos, and since I don't have any VCAs, it's actually pretty destructive, but awesome. I need some VCAs. Yes, you do need some VCAs. The sl yeah, the Sloth Chaos is awesome. I think, so basically, um, this is like, it does the same thing on one of the rows, but you've got more outputs. Um, it does essentially the same thing, but then it's got more. Um, this BD9 is awesome. I bought it second hand, someone had made it, and yeah. All right, next to that is, it's called the Kaminek, I guess that's how you would say it, and it's just a phaser. It's a phaser module, and it's a really, really, really good phaser module that's kind of based off 70s phasers, um, you know, which is like the golden era of phases. You know, you can make stuff that sounds super nice with this, especially if you're making dub or if you're making some kraut rock or something. It's just a really, really amazing phaser. It's quite expensive, but it's just, I love it so much. There's not too much to explain about it. Um, this here as well is just a delay. It's just a delay module called the uh, Make Noise Mimeophone. And it has lots of controls. It has a it has a reverb in it. Um, it's a really it's it's a, it's a delay that has a lot of artifacts. It's a delay that is based off once again early tape delays um, that waver and produce unpredictable uh, you know results. Um, so you can have a very straight delay, or you can very easily have a delay that wavers around and doesn't repeat. Perfectly. Um, it's fantastic. I, I love this delay. It's like the only delay in my system and it's just the best thing ever. <laughs> um, okay, we're almost there. And we've got the dope for wasp filter. It's another one. Um, same does the same thing as the other one at the top. It's great. I don't really need to explain it again. This one here is an oscillator. It's a Jaw uh, Analog Generate 3 uh, through zero multiphonic signal generator. And this thing kind of works kind of in the way that FM synth does. Um, it's a little bit complex to explain it in a short period of time, but it's a very, uh, it's, it's kind of strange. And I really just use this I mean, I use it as like a drum module for the most part and just like a kind of weird scratchy, I don't know, tone generator that, you know, when you're modulating a few of the uh, parameters on this, it just sounds wild. Um, and I mean, for me, I don't actually know much about musical theory. I'm more about texture and tom rock. So I love that. Yeah, that's very fun. This one here is a... Um, it's a, it's a DIY miniature version, a small compact version of the Mutable Instruments uh, Plats, which is a really, really good module. And I think a lot of people actually use this. If you, yeah, I mean, a lot of people use this. It has a really cool thing, which is, it's an oscillator and it has a function which just sends out chords. Now, if you're getting into modular and you're thinking, I love playing my keyboard and I love making large chord progressions, modular is not for you. Um, but, you know, this does a really good job of kind of like filling a void of chords. 
Um, it also is just, it can just be a regular monophonic synthesizer. It can be noise source. It can do drums, hi-hats, kicks. Um, you know, basically if you look at all those dots, so they're all... Get out of here. They're all different sounds. So each one of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, eight. And then also you've got green mode and then they're all different sounds. So if you go on the net and you go to YouTube and watch a demo of mutable instruments, plats, you will realize that there are a lot of people who use this and because it's fantastic. I got this second hand and it's a bit dodgy. It has some nuances, shall we say, which I can get into later, but it was very cheap because of that. And I think that's really good with modular is that um, you can pick stuff up for really cheap if it's like slightly broken or it's been made by someone, you know. Um, I guess now might be a good time to say I got it off the Aussie Wigglers uh, group, which is on Facebook and Discord. Uh, shout out to the Aussie Wigglers. If you're really interested in modular synth and the secondhand market for modular synth, um, go check them out. They're on Facebook and they're on Discord. It's called Aussie Wigglers. And it's a really good place where you can chat about modular synth. There's lots of people who are really generous on there with information which is fantastic it's a buy sell trade platform i try and get most of my stuff off there before i buy anything new i might do a shout out on there hey has anybody got this module they want to sell i reckon seven out of ten times someone's got one you know within a few hours you might you know have something for half the price because it's second hand okay to continue this is my favorite, this is one of my newer modules and it's just become an absolute, absolute favorite of mine because it is just the most luscious thing you'll ever hear in your life. And it's called a U-Jove and it's a filter. It's a, just a filter. It's got a uh, band pass, high pass, low pass. I think it's got a notch on there, but it just sounds really, really amazing. It's got two inputs, which is useful. The second input acts as overdrive and distortion of, of the first input if you have nothing plugged in. Um, it's so sick. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, you know, but for a good reason, it just sounds really good. This is also a smaller version of the the real, uh, the real deal, but, you know, it's fine. It's got a big knob. I like having the big knobs, you know. Like this one here. This is actually, I just found that at Reverse Garbage in uh, Sydney and just popped it on because I like having these these big ergonomic knobs. Um, I've got some shout outs to the, the Aussie Wigglers on the, on the chat. <laughs> um, okay, this is also one of my favorite modules. It's just so amazing. It's a squid sample. Squid Solemn Pool. Um, it's a sampler. It has, you can have eight samples that go for up to 11 seconds, but also within those samples, you can actually create cue points. So you can have an 11 second sample that has 10 different one shot sounds and you can cue them up and play them in ra at random, uh, whatever. When you change the pitch on this, it's it's kind of based off early samplers like the MPC or whatever. But so basically, when you change the pitch, you can really crush the bit rate, and you can crush the bit rate further. Um, yeah, this thing is just so amazing. It's got a USB, and you just you can actually just load your samples onto that. Make sure they're the right format, and then you can just chuck that in, and you can just load it up. It's super easy, super playable. The last three channels have like pitch knobs. So you can, you know, if you really like playing some music, you can, you can, you know, take a sample and you can send in some CV and you can play that. You know, you could play chords in theory, yeah. You can do lots of things with this and I love this a lot. And I think it was something that was really lacking in what I was doing with Modular. I really wanted a sampler. I really wanted some real sounds. I wanted to use field recordings. I wanted to record samples of me playing some chords. And this thing has just been amazing. You know, you can have drum parts, whatever. You've got, 
you've got all these different outputs. Now, I got a bit confused by these outputs when I first started because I don't know why you want one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight separate, but it's actually like, it's really, really useful because, you know, I mean, space is at a premium with modular and to have two samples out of the one thing is great. Um, you can also like switch this up. So what I usually do is I usually have the two middle ones going to one source and then the two, or I go these to one source and then the outer two to one source. And then you can actually change where the, the sample is coming out of. So I usually have like a dry and a wet channel. Um, if that makes sense, like sending it to effects or whatever. All right. And this is the final module in the case before I start actually patching something together. Uh, it's the NerdSec and it's a tracker sequencer. Um, if you know what a tracker is, great. If you don't, maybe Google it. It's just a sequencer, um, but it's really, really complex. And I, I mean, people have mixed feelings about about the nerd sec and I see a lot of them going up for sale online on the uh, Aussie Wigglers uh, groups, but I really, really, really love this thing. Okay. So it's got, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six kind of channels there, which can be like, you know, I can control, I use one to control the Atlantis, you know, whatever I can control six different things. So that's awesome. But also it's got all these trigger. I don't even, there's also another expander that I don't have, but you've also got 16 trigger outputs, um, which is just amazing. It's just so good. And like these big knobs, so it's like these big buttons rather, um, are fantastic. And they feel like, they feel really cool. You know, once you start to get the hang of this thing, you can just start, you know, writing music really quickly, um, which is what I'm all about is, you know, immediacy. Um, and yeah, so it's got another expander here, which has a MIDI input, a MIDI output and a Sega gamepad input, which I haven't used yet. I think it's still a little bit buggy and they haven't quite figured that out properly. But yeah, if I want to jam with some friends who use MIDI equipment, I can use that. If I want to record a uh, multi-track onto my computer, I can use the MIDI um, it's just nice to have MIDI um, as an interface for modular because it just is. It's very practical. Um, it's very useful. All right. Well, that's taken us up to almost an hour. Um, does anyone have any questions about... Of course, yeah, the Groovebox uses, you know, Groovebox is amazing. <laughs> um of course, when I come to jam with you, uh, Camilo, MIDI is very useful. Um, anyway, yeah, cool. I'm just gonna pop that camera over there. All right, I'm having a drink of water. I miss them too. I hate uh, lockdown. It's very depressing. And I think anyone that isn't even a little bit depressed right now is either ignorant or privileged. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, um, that's a really good question, Matt, about where I decide to place things. Um, basically has to do with like ergonomics and also thinking about the way that things are connecting together. Um, because as soon as you start plugging in cables, it just gets messy really quickly. So. It's really good to think about, I mean, if you've got lots of different little cables, you know, you might think about, okay, I'm going to send these to here. So I just need lots of small cables. These are going to be connected very often. These are going to be, you know, it's, it's all about kind of how it's, it's all, I don't know. It's, oh shit. <laughs> I dropped the camera. Oh, this lovely, stupid little tripod thing. Um, that'll do. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like to do with how it all patches together and how I might play it. Like I like having the mixer up the top because it's just, there's no ca ca cables there. I can just really easily access it. I can see it. Um, 
the sequencer down here and the sampler down here. It's really good because I do a lot of stuff with my fingers. I don't want to be like reaching out like this all the time to press the buttons. So here it's just really easy. Um, you know, I can just click, 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 click. Very easy. It's just, I mean, I change this thing around all the time. Where did the light go? What the heck? It's just like changed. I might flick the light switch on. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's that's something that's just always changing up, um, and that's kind of what I like about modular is if I just completely gut this thing and then rearrange it and change the placement of where the modules go, that actually might affect how I'm using it creatively and how I you know connect modules to other modules. I don't know. I think it's just experimenting with cable lengths. And <clears throat> I mean, I have so many cables that are extremely long. So I use all my short ones, so it's all neat. And then I start to run out of cables. And then <laughs> I just end up using these really long ones to go really short distances. But um, there's this Australian company called Tendrils and they make these cables which have a little right angle. And they're bloody awesome for patching stuff up and not taking up space. Um, I guess now is a good time to probably get started with some patching. I've been talking my uh, ass off for a while. Um, let's do it. So something that basically, I, I, I felt a bit silly unplugging it because I, I don't know, I normally just leave these plugged in, but some of the first things I do is, hold on a moment. What have you got here? So one of the first things I'll do is I've got uh, audio output. So the output of the dub mix into my Pittsburgh output. And that's just audio going from the output of this dub mix, which is my mixer, into my main output, which just goes to wherever, you know, the speakers, the interface, the mixer. Um, all right. So that's good. Now we've got audio. If I turn this up really loudly, you'll hear the noise floor, which is ridiculous. Actually, it's not that ridiculous, but you might not even be able to hear it. Um, anyway. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You got another drink of water. It's so hot outside. It's like, is it 30 degrees today? It feels like the middle of summer. All right, so something that I usually always have connected. I do constantly rearrange, but there are certain things that I just keep always patched, which is, I might just start it, is um, these NerdSec trigger outputs. There's one to eight, which conveniently are right next to the sampler. And I just usually just patch up one, two, three, four. Yeah, there are certain things in my rack that just stay the same. Um, I don't know. Five. I love these tendrils doing this because that's just like, there's eight cables, but it just, it doesn't really take up much space. It's amazing. And I had all the matching colors. I don't know where it's gone though. So this is this is triggering my my uh, OCD. <sighs> Where is the other one? Yeah, yellow. How many have I got here? I've got three anyway. So the good thing about this is I, I've got one to eight of samples going to one to eight of these triggers. It's very clear. I can see on the screen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no mucking around. Sometimes I use these three uh, last ones that have the CV control. I might use those with 
all of these extras with CV and, and modulation outputs. Um, but lately I've just been, yeah. What's going on here? So, two, three, four, five. Oh, <laughs> I patched it in wrong. I patched it in. The first is not an input. It's a little trigger to change the channel. Let's go here. One. I knew something was wrong. So three. So pretty soon I'll get some sound going just so it's a bit more fun and a little less monotonous. But um, that will happen very soon. So five. Six, seven, eight. Um, now I've kind of, uh, I've been uh, freestyling this pretty much the entire time and I'm just making it up as I go along. Um, there's things that I want to talk about and they'll just come up. Um, one of them being, which I thought I would talk about at the start, but I didn't, is... Modular, like people often associate modular with blippy block music. Um, but you can do anything you want with modular. So basically my system at the moment is set up as like an all-in-one kit. It's got effects, it's got a mixer, it's got oscillators, samples. Um, it's got everything in here. But some people might just want, you know, they, want, they might just want to use all of this to modulate MIDI information that goes somewhere else or they might just want a, mod a modular case which is just like a really nice compact effects module with some good modulation um, you can do whatever you want and everyone does it differently but for me uh, over the years of uh, playing gigs live and just you know living in small share houses I just like to have everything in the one spot that you know it has one power one power source two audio outputs, can plug the headphones in, and it's just good, it's just good to go. This size is fantastic. This case actually folds up and has a handle. I was saying earlier, it's an Amalgamod case, um, which is uh, an Australian uh, company, independent company who make them. Um, they're just really, really well built. They got some cool USB little lights, you know. It's just nice, but before this, I had a Pelican case that I just screwed into the side um, as a kind of cheap option. Anyway. Um, um, let me have a look at some of these comments. There's a few rolling through. Um, oh, look, I think... I don't know if, if OCD is a common feature in, in modular players. Like, I like to be really neat, but then... By the time this is all patched in, it's just gone because I don't have enough long, I don't have enough perfect length cables, um, which is like something that, I mean, it's kind of like whenever I see a modular system set up and it has like all of these perfect, like matching colors and cables, I don't know. It doesn't look that nice to me. It's kind of like I want some mess in there. I want, you know, I like that everything's a bit chaotic and it's all, you know, jumbled up. But I think I want to be OCD, but I also get a bit lazy with it. So, like, <laughs> here I am paying out people with, uh, you know, matching colored cables, but I'd like to do that. You can also use cables as, like, visual signifiers of like, you know, blue is audio and yellow is control voltage and, you know, black is gates and triggers. Anyway, um, should I patch up a couple more things or are people interested in kind of getting some sound going? Where should we take this, uh, dear viewer? Where should we take this? Should we get a couple of things going? Um, one thing that I, I will do actually is, which I normally, this is just like my go-to is I have the, um, IntelliJ Atlantis and I use gate trigger and modulation on the filter. That's just because it's really straightforward and it has other modulation sources. So, you know, I can get more complex. 
anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to do this because this is normally what I do is I've had this thing for the longest and I just love it. And it's always number one on the sequencer or whatever. So, um, yeah, I've even got some like little cable ties neatly, uh, you know, put them together. So this is always where I start. I've got the neatness, but then it starts to just all fall apart. Um, so this is, So I'm going to get the gate, which is a trigger, which will trigger the Atlantis. And then I'm going to get control voltage, which is going to give me the pitch of the Atlantis. Wait. Actually, I'm going to, I'm just doing this in such a sloppy way, uh, whatever. How are you finding this, everybody? Is it all right? Is it bearable? It's been an hour. That went really, really quickly. Um, I'm actually quite enjoying this. It's very, uh, it's very, f all right, let's start again. I'm going to go modulation. Da, 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 da. So a really classic um, setup with modular is to have modulation on a filter, a filter opening and closing. Yeah, I, could, I better get some sound going. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll get a sequence going on, um, on the Atlantis and I'll get some samples going. Let's tuck this in neatly over here so all right now this is like nothing else is plugged in except for these are which are like triggering samples all right let's add a kick and let's add a, a baseline and just get things kind of rolling and then we'll get more and more and more and more complicated with so this is good because there's lots of things that would if these were all separate modules would require lots of patching but this is all this has got an attack decay sustain release you know, it's got modulation, it's got some knobs and filters and things. So look at that. So that's already, everything's good to go, but this thing's not going to make any noise. We're not going to hear any noise because the audio output is not plugged into anywhere. So let's plug it in. And because I've only just started, I can make sure all the cables are like really nice lengths. I might even just use some more tendrils and try and get perfect length. That's like one centimeter off perfect. You'll notice that as time progresses, I will give up on that. Hey Jackson, how you doing mate? Um, yeah. I think I said it about 14 times, but yeah, these are tendril cables. This is another Australian company. And these things just rule. They're a little right angle, which make it much neater for uh, patching in your system. Um, anyway, all right, cool. So I've plugged in some CV, a gate, some modulation from my sequencer, the NerdSec. Let's just load up. I've got a little preset thing so everything's going to the right place let's just get a really simple I'm just typing in some notes into the sequencer and I'm just going to get this going so now we're going to have some sound really shortly um, okay so turn up the master turn up the master here and very soon we're going to hear some bass Oh, shit, that's red. That's going into the red. Sorry about that. The cables last a while if you're, like, looking after them, but I definitely have had a few cables that have just failed on me because, uh, 
I've mistreated them. But then you've got cables like this one, um, which is like a very nice, um, slightly more expensive cable, which is like reinforced and it's nice and sturdy. But if they don't work, you know, sometimes it can be a bit of a mystery and then before you know it, um, it doesn't work and then you don't know why and then you figure out it doesn't work and then you don't throw them out and then you just put a cross on it. You don't throw it out. That's what I do. Um, I'm just going to fix up this gain. It looks like it's not balanced. Can everyone hear that bass okay? I think that's a bit better. All right. Sweet. Thank you. All right, um, let's get a kick drum going. Why not? That's another really, really simple thing to do because all it requires is a trigger. That's all. And I like to put it on its own independent channel and I use the CV to uh, control the decay. Um, also, another thing I can do with the NerdSec, which is really cool, is I can set this to play random notes instead of just playing the one note which I really really like because I basically I don't know anything about musical theory but I know that if stuff's moving around oh goodness that's really really peaky sorry about that Like that's actually sounds pretty stupid, but maybe you want like, you can actually like chuck in randomness, but then it's a bit of experimenting, you know, it's not going to sound good straight away. I'm just playing around with the sequencer at the moment. Um, so, get those a bit sharper. It still sounds really stupid. I might go. That's the thing when you're doing something live on Twitch. So as I was saying before with the, uh, oh, I haven't plugged in anything, so I've got to plug in the uh, effects and everything, but let's just get this kick drum going. <laughs> Sound a little bit more interesting. So the kick drum, I normally like to go into the little mixer here. And then from the little mixer, I like to go into, I like having like a dry signal that has a filter. So Actually, I'm going to use a little tendril. So the kick drum at the moment is going into a little a little mini mixer and then it's going into a filter. And then from the filter... That's actually just going to drive you crazy if I keep that going. Um, so from this little wasp filter, I'm going to go into... There's a little master input um, on the dub mix, which is just it basically means I've got I've got a line which is just it's just straight audio. I can't affect it, but often I don't want to affect it. You know, there might be stuff sample. I've got samples that I want to send into the dry mixer, which will just which will just go straight to the output, which can't be processed or affected. But I like that. You know. I have something that can just be straight, dry, nice, big, crunchy, you know. All right, let's get the kick drum going. So it's on number three. So let's give it a little trigger. And yeah. All right, so now we're going to have the kick drum coming through. And like this kick kind of sculpt it how I want. And that just 
just like it's just such a nice sounding kick. It's got this click sound. Hoopy man, that sounds really good. I, I need to get a bit more complex with that. I just use the the random R N random note between. Yeah, I need to change those settings. The kick is a uh, mutant BD nine, which is a nine oh nine clone. And I'm gonna change it so it's on the offbeat. I'm changing um, when the notes are and then also with this sequencer it just sends through the note and the gate information and, and unless I tell it to it's just going to keep writing that out so you can hear where I've put little stops in the gate. So this is kind of sounding cool but you know like maybe I want all of these this is just using um, the sequencer going to the Atlantis by the way um, I can have this feature here where each of the steps, the filter is open slightly in slightly different ways. And that automatically sounds kind of a bit more interesting and a bit more dynamic and I can get really, really tech with that. But I've actually, I'm going to run out of time if I don't speed this thing up, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch in my effects. Um, now, the dub mix has one channel which can be pre-fader, which means you can hear it sent to the effect without hearing the original, which is really useful. So, I... going to let's get the first effect going which is one of my favorites it's the clouds um, and also while I'm at it I'm gonna I'm gonna get this out of the way don't, don't want you to go too mad with that unresolved baseline um, all right so the nerd sec has a clock output and like I was talking about before that clock I'm using a, a stackable. So this this works like a multiple. Um, you can have this output, you know, wherever, and you can put another one in the top and it can take two of the same source. And of course, because it's the master clock output, I like to just molt that up straight away so I can send it to different places. Um, of course, I forgot to mention that like in watching this, there's a lot of assumed knowledge uh, and, you know, assumed, I don't know, yeah, knowledge about music production and there are terms that you might not understand, but feel free to, you know, get a message going in the, in the comments about, you know, what does that word mean? What does multiple mean, you know? Okay. So I'm sending the clock... I, I was getting the clouds uh, set up and I got a little bit distracted because I remembered I want to send the clock signal to the clock divider. Now, I'm going to hit play on this and I'm going to show you what the clock divider is doing. Oh, crap. Sorry. Okay, so if you look here, all that's being sent is this is the... Where are we? That's like the tempo. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, sending off, off triggers that are going that fast. I'm getting that going into a clock divider, right? And that clock divider is now splitting up that signal into different time, into different times, and that is very useful. And one of the main things I use that for is I take like this one. 32. So this has got it's got three different modes that go faster and slower, but I usually just put it on that one, and I send that into 
the freeze of the clouds. And so if you can see here, that light that turns on, you'll know, you'll be able to hear it once the sound actually comes through, but that kind of takes a snapshot, 32 bars. It's like, it works in time and it actually, it sounds fantastic. And since I've done that, I really haven't stopped doing it. It's just really awesome. So already, you know, that thing is turning on and off in time and I'm going to keep it going. Cool. All right. So, sorry, I'm knocking around the cameras and everything. Yeah, I'm glad they. I'm glad the multiple cameras is working. I think it's um. Yeah, I think it's going all right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um. All right, I'm an idiot. Okay. Um. I'm just gonna get this clouds effects module going so we can actually hear it. And I've already given up on my OCD patching because, you know, not everyone has time to sit around all day and <laughs> perfect their patches. But yeah, patch cable length, I should say. Now that's going to go into the return. So we're going to hear the effect of uh, the mutable instruments clouds on the bass line. Let's do it, shall we? Is everybody ready? <laughs> Whoa, so it's got a pitch, like it's got reverb. Listen to that, like that's straight up already simple bass line, but I'm triggering. See, this is like, I'm triggering with the clock divider. I'm triggering when this starts, but if that didn't, if that freeze didn't start, it's still kind of cool, but it's a little bit more repetitive. And I think using a clock divider helps with, you know, getting rid of monotony like that. The clock isn't going into the cloud. The clock, the clock divider is going into what's called the freeze of the clouds. So you can turn that on and it just kind of, you know, it, it just stays there. But, you know, I want it to just sort of like be in time and do some effects that kind of keep things interesting. So I like to put the freeze in there. And then like I was saying, I can cut it away from the original so you can only hear what's affected. The freeze, so what the freeze is doing, this is a granular synthesizer and you can actually get like granular plugins for Ableton, etc., which is really cool. But what it does is it's, it's, it's got a buffer and it takes a sample, a small sample, and it's scrubbing the sample. So it's kind of creating a drone by a really like tiny, tiny, tiny little snippet. So you can hear I'm changing the kind of length of the snippet. So the freeze is just pausing the sample and it's just scrubbing. Um, another thing I like to do, which is really great, which adds for a bit of dynamic on the on the uh, on the clouds, is sending it a little modulation from this module called the sloths. And now I'm going to put that on. Let's put it on the density and see how that affects it. I usually put it on the texture, but. And so what this is going to do is this thing is just slowly moving. You can see it's green and red. But what that's going to do is that's going, that's like me turning this knob. You can't really hear it. Let's try this. And 
so you can hear that's already kind of getting kind of dynamic, I guess. <laughs> My mum gave me this camera when I was 16 and it still does the job. No, I haven't tried the beads, but the beads is like the same thing as the clouds, but way more tech and amazing. I just haven't got one. Um, all right, so let's keep it going, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the original bass line in there too. Change the pitch up. All right, I think maybe now is a good time to um, maybe patch something that requires a little bit more than just a trigger, you know, and it's already like, there's not much going on, but it's already messy. Um, let's get another effect going because the effects I just like to have on the oxens that just makes sense for me. So on B we're going to have the Mimeophon which is a delay. Oh yeah, at the Jove. I'll tell you what I like doing with the Jove. I like having that um, samples from the sampler um, going into the Jove because I just like, that's what I like doing. All right, so let's get some samples going. Um, this thing is just awesome. It's got so many banks of samples that I can just put together. Um, I'll put some, I'll put, I've got one that's just SNES sound effects. So let's try that, shall we? So what I like to do is I like to set it up like this. Let me show you. And see, this thing's because I press stop and the texture's on, it's just still running through that sample, you can hear. Um, all right, so what I've got, I've, I'm going to turn these around. This is how I like to have it set up. I like to have the sampler. So basically, I have eight samples and then this configuration, I can have them going dry to the same place that the kick's going which is this little mini mixer, which is very useful, very cheap, get one. Um, and then another one, which is going into the, the Jove, the U-Jove. Um, yeah, you can use the, the clouds as a looper. Yeah, the Squid Massive. Just get, These are just so good. Like there are other sample, samplers that are more complicated, but this thing is just, it's so hands-on and I just love hands-on modules. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this camera down because it's a bit awkward. Maybe I can get a better angle or something. Try that. Oh, that's, I can't put it in the, in the box of cables because then I can't reach the cables. Oh, look at that. You can kind of see what's going on. Um, all right, so I have, I'm going to go the dry signal of the samples into the same small mixer that the kick's going into, which has a filter if I want it. So I can use this filter, you know, on the kick, whatever. I can also, let's go through some of these samples that I've got here. I think that's Mario, Mario World or something. So how cool is that? Like that just sounds cool already. Let's chuck it in the sequencer, which is the nerd sec. And we'll just put it at the start of the pattern. Let's change the pitch of it. I'll try and make it kind of sound in time. So one thing that I will mention, if you are going to get the squid sample, it doesn't, uh, it's, it's just raw digital samples. And if you put the, put the volume too high, it's going to peak and you'll hear it. I'll, I'll... Hear that clicking on the, on the sample? Yeah, it's, you don't want that. So I usually try and just listen to it on its own and put it as loud as I can before it starts cracking, cracking out. And then I'm going to change the speed. The, vo 
volume on that sample is really weird. But anyway, so that's coming in dry, but if I want to send it to the filter, that's now going to the filter, but I haven't plugged the filter into anything. So the filter I like to plug into um, its own channel because it sounds good. So basically like I prioritize, I've got four, four channels here and I prioritize them in like, I guess like the Atlantis has its own one and then I use, you know, maybe another synth voice on another. I've got like a, a filter which I use has three inputs and I use that as like a drum mixer which has its own um, channel. But that cable's too short. This cable's whatever. Um, I'm gonna plug that into its own channel which is input four. How is that even doing that? It's like, my delay is like wigging out. Ah, you know what it is? I press stop and it's the clouds. <laughs> anyway. See, mysterious things happen with modular synthesizers. Okay, so. In here now, I've got a filter on that sample. Which sounds awesome. And for the sake of this example, I'm just going to put some modulation on the filter. So now it's going to, I'm using the sloths, and it's just got a little bit of movement. You'll be able to hear it. It's cool. And then if I, maybe I want to put that into the clouds, so. Whoa. See, that just sounds crazy. It's like one sample. All right, so from here, I'm getting I'm getting uh, confused because I'm explaining things, patching it, and chatting to people. So this is cool. Uh, maybe I want to try another sample that's like. Oops. What's on number two? I really need to go to the toilet. Um, take this time to get yourself a drink of water. I'm just doing number one, so I won't be long. I'll keep the music going. Why not, eh? Also, another good thing about that kick module is it's got its own independent volume, so, you know. This just sounds good, no matter what you do. And you might know that it just sounds like an SH-101. Another cool thing about this nerd sex sequencer is you can actually set it to 
only play the triggers at certain times. So as you can hear, it's not playing all the notes. That's another good thing about. I really like creating uh, creating tracks with a bit of dynamic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like the idea of like having patches set up that can be really dynamic really quickly, which like I mean I guess with the clouds example like it's it's pretty it just happens kind of straight away. Um, so, oh yeah, so with, um, I'm just going to stop that for a sec. So with this, I was talking about earlier with the squid sample, you can have an 11 second sample max, but in between that sample, you can have different, um, cue points. So with this, I've got it set up. So this is like a Nintendo, a super Nintendo sample. I think Yoshi Island or something. And um, see, it's it's just queued at different points and it randomly, tr it, I think there's, uh, there's seven different points. I'll play them in order. So this is in order. But if I put it onto random, so I love that, make it a bit louder. See, there's that peaking. I'm just going to go down a little bit. You can also change the bit rate, which is just like awesome. You can make it like, it's kind of got that early sampler digital crunch you can hear. Um, let's send that back to the filter. Put a bit of reverb on the clouds. And let's just... I'm just gonna I'm just programming in the sample to just kind of play every whatever <laughs> and all right so I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the baseline for this when this this trigger when this gets triggered so I'm gonna change the probability on that to like a, a quite a lot less. So now, so yeah, it's like sounding okay, but maybe I want to change the pitch. Sounding kind of not very good, but that's what it's all about. It's about experimenting, you know? This doesn't really work with that bass line, does it? So I'll just get rid of that. Sounds cool, you know? Oh man, this Nintendo sample is like, how good is that? So I'm just gonna actually put that at the start of every uh, 64 steps. Um, and then, So all of a sudden we're making some goofy Super Nintendo music. All right, something more complicated is I'm gonna make a snare. All right, I'm gonna do a snare. So the way that I like to make a snare is using white noise. And to make this, this is gonna be slightly more complicated because I'm going to use a VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. And if you imagine an amplifier like in your lounge room, an amplifier is something that makes the volume louder. So what a VCA does is it's voltage controlled. So everything in, in Neurorack uses voltage, uses electricity. Um, and basically what I want to do is I want the snare to happen only when I send it a trigger. So now, now, now. So that's what I'm going to do with a voltage controlled amplifier. I'm going to get some noise and I'm going to put it into, let's say VCA input three and there's just cables everywhere. And then from there, I'm going to go 
into whoops, shoot daisy. Bear with me. Um, all right. So I'm gonna go. This is an output from the filter at the top here. I'll move that. Maybe that makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. Okay. So the output of the filter is going to go into channel three. And that's going to be its own output, which is going to be a bunch of my drum parts. Some of those drum parts include the Akinese Taiko. So I'm going to plug that up in the top, in the low pass in, because I like the bass sounds on that. And then we've got, so we've got the noise source going all the way into the VCA and from the VCA, it's going to go back into the filter. Like so. I'm going to go into the high pass. And then when I turn this up, you should be able to just hear noise when I turn up the volumes all the same. Here we go. So, all right, Matt, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you coming by. Um, uh, that actually happened to me. Um, a cable did fall in and it shorted the whole thing and I was so scared. It, it hit that metal pat, the metal patch thing. And yeah, that was bad. The whole system just shorted and turned off, but it was okay in the end. Um, that was kind of terrifying. So here we go. We've got some noise. It sounds awesome. And actually, so this is coming from the sample and hold and the noise source. And I can actually change. So this is the colored noise and I can... It's kind of got a, a blue and a blue and a red, and it actually just for a noise. It's like you know I can get that sounding okay, but what I want to do is I want to have the noise source. Apologies to anyone who uses Eurorack and understands how VCA works. Um, this might be a little boring for you, but I guess I'm making it for people who might not understand. So yeah. The VCA is letting the noise through, but what I want to do is I want there to be a trigger and I want there to be an envelope that's controlling when this sound comes in and out to make it into a snare drum. So I'm going to make it trigger. I'm going to use, what I'm going to use is I've got the noise source, the VCA, and I also have the Quadrax, which is an envelope generator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out of trigger from the nerd sec so I can control exactly when that starts. I'm going to put it into the trigger one. And from the trigger of that. So I'm creating an envelope here. This envelope is going to control when that sound comes in. So what I need to do is I need to program it in here. I'm just going to do it on the on the typical snare spot. So here we go. I'll just. Oh. All right. So let's let's let make the magic happen. So, check it out. So, I've got a trigger here on the screen that's, you know, there's the trigger which is being sent from trigger spot 9 into the, into the envelope and it's creating a snare, as you can see, which is really cool. So you can see, I'm gonna, this, this input here is the control voltage which is the information from the VCA here so that can be whatever and that's going in to my noise and that's give it a little boost and I've just pressed play on everything else so one two three four blah 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 here we go
So the cool thing about this Quadrax is I can do all kinds of uh, different envelopes. Look at that. That sounds cool, doesn't it? But what happens if I do that through the clouds? Fun. Cool, I guess I'm uh, making some dance music for a little, bit, a little while, but I'm probably going to ditch that idea pretty soon. Just wanted to explain the VCA and uh, I use it. I didn't realize that it would take this long to get this far, but I've really got nothing on at the moment. So if everyone's enjoying it, great. Why don't I get the Atlantis going? I've got some other oscillators here. Got to finish. What I'll do is I'll finish plugging in the effects. So you can hear the delay because that's fun. And then I'll modulate some things on the delay, maybe. So. Actually, I'll go C. Maybe the baseline. All right, so let's put the baseline through the delay. It's got a nice reverb too. So that's, it's kind of like, yeah. And Sure, I think there's a thing with OBS where it doesn't um, send out stereo signal, but if you've got headphones on, let me know if you can hear that stereo panning, which is happening on that delay. I think you sh maybe you should, like the monitor seems to be there, but... Oh, cool. Yeah, so the Mimeo phone is a really cool delay, and um, I'll tell you what, Actually, I'm going to send the clock trigger into the tides, and then from the tides, I'm going to go, actually I like what the tides does, so I'm going to take one of the outputs of the tides and put it into a multiple, so I've got three copies of it. send that to the um, delay length. So I think this should... Now I've got the tides is, is modulating in time because it's got a clock the uh, length of the delay and so it's kind of getting quite wild um, another thing that I like to do which I didn't do yet is see I told you I like to be neat and I, know I like to uh, be OCD but then I just get carried away but um, I'm gonna take this the, the, the just steady clock from the clock divider the, the one at the top into the tempo of the Mimeo form. So that's kind of, um, that's in time somewhat, but it also is pretty wild. And that's, I, I, I like that about mod modular synthesis is like just being able to control everything. <laughs> 
that's that's sounding good. Like that's just the Atlantis going into the reverb. So now I have two effect sources. Well, I two have I have two effects that are doing stuff which is in time, but also is very freeform and very kind of it's just wavering all over the place and. It's very interesting, and I don't have to do very much, <laughs> which is great. And I'm just playing with some of the effects on the Atlantis. Now let's get this going a bit more. All right, so I want to trigger the Tycho. I usually put that on six. I don't know why. So there. And now let's let's get Tycho into the mix too. I'm gonna give that Messy, messy, messy. Got some CV, some control voltage that's going to go into the Tyco. Whatever. I'm going to probably unpatch this and repatch it later, but I'm just going to power through. All right. So. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the random thing. On, I'm just pro programming in some steps for um, the Tyco, so bear with me. I'm also going to put in the probability so it doesn't happen all the time. And I'm going to put that down really low and get this going. So, see the Tycho is this very crazy drum module that, depending on where you put it, it makes fantastic sounds. So, I guess this is a good time to mention that with modular, there are some modules that have functions inbuilt. They have VCAs inbuilt. They have, they don't just have constant noise. They have, um, you know, a release knob built in. And for me, when I started using modular, I always just wanted that. I always just wanted modules that are like, you know, they have that function built in because like, otherwise you're just, you're left with constant noise, you know, to have, to have modules that have like a release knob, it just means that you don't have to worry about patching up a whole VCA. You've just got, it's all in there, you know? And so, yeah, that's, that's plugging away, doing its thing. Um, perhaps we could do some modulation. I might get this Joy Analog to generate three going. How's everyone traveling? Is this enjoying, is this, uh, is this enjoy, enjoyable for you? I'm just gonna plug in the phaser because like some hi hatty sounds with the phaser is just mwah, gorgeous. Oh, that already had the, uh, Listen to that. Listen to that phaser. It's, it's beautiful. It is infinitely deep, isn't it? It just... You can really get lost very quickly. Um, and I hope I'm not going through uh, steps too quickly or anything like that. But um, Maybe I'll use... Wait, what? I normally like to think about how I'm going to set things up rather than this other process which is just freestyling it but that's all right all right so i'm gonna go i'm gonna take this oscillator here the joy analog and i'm going to 
send it out. So we'll go, oh, I'm going to get that going into its own VCA. Um, actually, I think this will just automatically, uh, oh, I don't want to compl complicate things. Um, I'm not, actually, what I'm the way I normally set up this is it goes into into the the drum, the drum department. Of, of, I don't know why I put that into there. It's bloody hot out there. Um, all right, so. So this is the Joy Analog. It's kind of like, it just, it's really crazy. Like you can get regular tones out of it, but this is, this is that stuff I do like. I'm going to put that onto, let's say number four. So I need to trigger the Quadrax. And then I'm going to go, that trigger is going to be controlled, you guessed it, by the VCA. So that's in number two. This is all a bit messy. And yeah, so that's number four. So. I'm going to do this. So there we go. really weird. Why isn't that? So where's that trigger coming from? That's the trigger. Oh, yes. So what the hell's going on? All right. This module's not acting how it should for some reason. Let's try and plug it in somewhere else. Let's try two. You know what? This might be it. Oh, no. That's really weird. Why isn't that working on number three? It's probably got some some bloody CV input business going on. Anyway, all right. So let's just I'm gonna try and get something that's kind of interesting to listen to. So as you can hear, that's that's the joy analog. I like to do these kind of crunchy, crunchy, crunchy munchy sounds. I'm gonna put it through the filters. Oh, the clouds as well. And let's get some samples on the go. I'm going to change the samples up completely because I want to do that. I've actually got this really nice, I was working on it earlier, be a bit enjoyable. So now I've got got some nice pad samples, I believe. No, I don't. <laughs> that one back. Just loading up some samples. That's not a sample, that's a drum break, but let's roll with it. All right. Let's see what we got here, shall we? This is just a pattern that's on the sequencer. I'm just checking it out that connects to 
the um, sampler. So. Number one. Uh, um. All right, here we go. might be a little bit more interesting. So this is like something that I already made up made earlier, which is like a drum break that's sampled and it's just I mean it's all patched differently so I'm gonna have to work out what was going to wear, but you get a pretty good idea already. That's sounding pretty nice. Oh yeah, okay, so let's let's get another oscillator voice going in. Where are we at? We're at four o'clock. Alright, so we've got the sampler going in, we've got the effects fill. Let's use this I'm, I've changed my mind. We're gonna use the sequential switch. And the sequential switch is going to change every 64 bars. I'm putting that into the trigger in. And the thing that we're going to use the sequential switch for is I'm going to use that for the filter that's on the break, but I'm going to make it co more complex than just one wave. So let's yes all right so one of them will be ah yes that's right so i'm going to use one of these which is a... i think i showed you them earlier it's like a multiple but in a cable a stackable and i'm going to use the stackable to trigger off the start of an envelope at the same time that the sequential switch is going to be toggling through the different modulation sources, if that makes sense. So, do, 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 do. I need a longer cable. All right, so this will make sense shortly. But basically what I'm doing is I've got three different modulation sources, uh, four rather, they're doing different things and that is going to affect the filter, which is the uh, breakbeat is going into. So Alright, so trigger and then. Okay, so that's th three we'll do for now. Alright, so I'll just make a new sequence that's just the break beat. I think that should do the trick. Now, this is why sequential switches are awesome. up so more frequently so you can hear it all right as you can hear the filter is changing every time the clock divider is triggering the sequential switch it's going through three different 
CV sources, as you can hear. You can do that with melodies. You can have four different melodies that toggle. And if you do that really quickly and with, you know, um, different rhythms, you can create kind of complex stuff really quickly. But you can hear, this sounds cool. And I'm using envelopes from the uh, Mutable Peaks to change. So that's kind of cool. A little bit of fiddling to get it into the right spot, but yeah. That's another thing that I really like is the sequential switch. Um, I think now might be a good time to try out a logic module because that is slightly more complex. Um, now what, where, what I like to do is I like to send another clock from the Euro rack into the plug. So, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and, I'm just gonna place that there so you can see the plug and how I'm patching. It's a little bit touch and go, but uh, that's all right. Whatever. <laughs> you barely can see what's going on, but that's okay. Um, all right, so what I've done is, there's, there's two lanes here for the uh, the logic module, and so this one you can set you can send in a tempo and see this is or that's a clock divider, basic clock divider to the right of it. So I'm splitting that into half. And what I want to do is I want to take that output, that second one, and I'm going to put it into the input of one channel, and then. I'm going to take I'm going to take another gate source from my handy clock divider. Can you see how now you can kind of get to understand how useful it is because I'm using it in so many different ways and it's all in time. Um, and I'm going to chuck that in to the second input of the logic module. And now, so the way a logic module works is you're sending it two gates, right? Or it's two, two triggers or two gates. And when both are high, that is when you get an output. That is when you get trigger output. So if you can see, I'm trying to make some space up. So here we go. And you can also control sort of with this particular module you can see you can you can you can it's not just when it's both up but maybe when when you know it, it, it changes depending on what setting it's on and I'm not going to go too far into that um, but basically yeah so you can see here this is a nice trigger that's not just like it's not just going straight like the clock divider is it's 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 there's dynamic in there and you can use that to trigger say another envelope on the quadrax or I could just use that instead of programming when the snare drum is gonna want it's gonna come up, gonna be triggered rather. I'll just use this instead. So let's see how that goes. See, that's like kind of okay it's it's a little bit boring it's just like but if you take a more complicated um gate source for instance the mimeophon actually has a gate output and because that's being modulated in time but it's moving have a listen to that I'm creating a rhythm 
you know, that's kind of has a bit of life and a bit of movement. Um, but I don't really have to do too much. I just have to, you know, plug it in and then get, get the right settings. And also it just kind of keeps going, which is cool. And the way that the gate's being triggered, it's, it's from the Mimeophone, but the Mimeophone is being modulated so the delay is not, um, you know, it's not just a straight delay, it's moving. So that movement is translated into a gate, which is going into a logic module, which is then giving me a rhythm that is dynamic. How's everyone going with that uh, concept of a logic module? And obviously you can make it more like rigid and more freeform and flowy. I like freeform and flowy. So if I change the delay time on that mimeophone, you're gonna get different rhythms. And also, if I chuck that into a delay, the same delay that's modulating the, um, that's affecting the logic module rather, um, you kind of have something that like, it's like, um, it's its own ecosystem, you know? Almost dropped my phone. And I've just typed J. Sorry about that. Cool. Uh, let's get rid of that kick. Maybe we want to make something that's a little bit more like a little bit more ambient and we don't know how to do that. I'm going to use this uh, Mutable Instruments Platts clone um, right after this toilet break. I'm just going to keep that beat going and um, you can enjoy it. I'll be back in just a moment. Hello. All right, I'm back. And um, I guess I'll just reiterate that, yeah, what I like about, about modular and the way that I usually like to set things up is I like to have elements of like control and precise accuracy, but I also like to have modulation and movement and dynamic that I've planned and put together, but don't ultimately, you know, know what's going to happen with it. And also like if that stuff starts to sound a bit weird, like this um, logic module, I can just turn it off, you know, and I can just leave that. But I've always got these rigid things, like I've got bass lines that I can put in or melodies, I've got drum sounds that are triggering at precise times or at precise times, but with a probability that, you know, won't happen constantly. So it's all about, for me, it's all about creating dynamic within, you know, what I've got. 
How's everyone uh, traveling? I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and make this a little bit more droney and a, bit, a little bit more ambient with the um, with another oscillator. Um, this oscillator, the Mutable Platz uh, clone, has a very good chord feature. I don't really know musical theory or have interest in it. Sweet. Um, all right. Now, what I was saying before is I got this for cheap because it was slightly broken. I got it for half price. It's half price um, of like a sec of the second hand price. So this thing cost me 150 bucks, but I've seen them they go second hand for like three hundred dollars because uh, it doesn't work properly. But I've worked a way around that, which is fantastic, and it uses this attenuverter. Now, so the thing is, this module... <laughs> Drones overhead. Um, this module like doesn't output unless it's got a, a signal going into its level. There's a level input. And by default, these things normally just output sound constantly, but this doesn't. It requires the level input to... Um, control when it's like its own internal VCA, but actually it's a low pass gate, which I was talking about before, which is like a VCA. But if I use a, um, a tenuverter, I can just give it that volume that it needs, but it doesn't have a knob that on the, on the unit, on the module that does that. So I'm using the attenuverter to control the volume. So that's like, that was the problem with it. And considering it's like, half the price of the second hand market. It's like, I can do that. I can have a cable, you know, in my, in my system. That's fine by me. Um, but yeah, let's get this going into, it's a little bit funky though. Like sometimes it gets a bit weird, sounds a bit weird, but I kind of like that. And I'm glad you're all enjoying this. Um, give us a follow. <laughs> <laughs> like, rate, and subscribe. Oh, you can't do that on Twitch, can you? Like my other stuff. I don't know. Follow my YouTube account. Now, this is very free. Also, this is very free form. Um, I kind of like it that way, and I'm I might continue do, doing this, but I want to I want to do an introductory to mod introduction to modular synth kind of series. Um, but I think that's more of like a constructed a constructed like a uh, YouTube creation type thing, but I'm having a lot of fun with this and I hope you're getting a lot out of it. Um, that's another thing. Yeah. Drop a PayPal tip. Like underneath the box here, there's a little thing that says PayPal donations. If you're getting something out of this, drop us a couple of bucks. goes a long way. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, I am just getting this other voice ready. Um, so I'm going to go into number two, so it doesn't have to be that long out. Perfect cable length. Look at this. This is going to work just a treat. Okay. So let's just, I'll go to the chord mode because that thing is just so nice. Um, all right. Now one. So we've got some effects on the go. I'm going to turn that off. All right, so as you can hear, as I turn the attenuverter up, look at that instant chord. You know, choose, choose your flavor, modulate them up. This thing is nice. And so, yeah, so as you can hear, as I turn the attenuverter up, it's turning the level up. So there's an input on here that says level. And by default, as I was saying, this oscillator generally just outputs like this, but this one's a little bit broken and it needs a little bit of help. So I've sent it an attenuverter, which is basically just sending a constant 
um, amount of electricity. The more electricity that goes in, the louder it is. And, you know, it's like that premise, you can take an LFO, like a, that waves like that, you know, and you can use an attenuverter to control how much that goes up and down. So it might just be like this, a little bit of subtle movement, you know? And I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna, so you can hear what, what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put, where are we? I'm gonna use this tides, which has, has like a LFO in it, and I'm gonna put that into the input of the attenuverter. And you can hear that's going up and down. I'll just turn this down. And you can control how much. See, I'm turning the knob and I'm just bringing it right, dying it right back. And that's just like a little bit of subtle, a bit of a subtle pulse, you know? Which is controlled by another module, which can be controlled by another module. But yeah, this is like sounding all right. project again. Ba -ba 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 -ba, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, if you want something really beautiful, like I highly recommend the Mutable Instruments um, plats, which is like P L A I T S, like a hair plat. few more of these cables and I'm gonna make things a little more complex. I am going to, rather than just going straight out of the oscillator into, you know, the VCA, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna take a little pit stop via, via this filter. I'm gonna go out of that into a filter because who doesn't love a filter? I don't know. <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> um, answering my own questions. It's getting a bit 420 up in here. Um, all right, so, all right, now I've got I've got our sound, right? And not only do I have control over the volume, I've now got a filter on it, which I love. But it's a little bit boring, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take, oh goodness, there's just stuff, cables all over the floor. They're just dropping, but we're gonna get there. So you remember I used the sequential switch before to create some like dynamic in the filter that was going through the samples. I am going to do the same thing. However, I'm going to use the attenuverter to reverse the modulation. The modulation. So if you imagine like I've got the sequential switch is, go, is, is you know, creating some stuff, going up and down, up and down. But if I take that output and I put it through an attenuverter, I can flip the signal upside down, if that makes sense. And basically, so I've got one that goes like this, it can go like this, and they're like playing off each other just by inverting the signal. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, so first thing I've got to do is I've got to unplug the sequential output and I'm going to put it into a multiple. So I have three copies of it. I'm going to put the other one back where it was, which is into the filter cutoff of the, of the U-Jove. But I'm also going to put the multiple out 
of, of that, I'm going to go into the attenuverter. And then from the attenuverter, I'm going to take the output of that into the cutoff of the filter. Very simple stuff. Very simple. Now let's see how we go. Now I'm just going to... Let's see what I can do here. I'm just, I'm really just playing. So I've told you about the concept of what I'm doing, but actually what I'm doing is I'm just moving the attenuverter to a place that is to taste. And I think, I mean, a lot of people with modular synth stuff, they can get very technical, but then the end result might not sound too good. So it's always good to just like, you know, have an idea, but be willing to be flexible and be modular. Um, find some other samples to use. something going on but you know what it's just still constantly droning and I want more movement I want more dynamic so it's, I've got that already going into a VCA so let's use another input on the quadrax and let's modulate the um, the CV but the quadrax doesn't need at all times a signal to trigger it it's got like an LFO and it's got some other things so Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to trigger it. I'm going to trigger it from another, um, another gate from the logic module, the plug logic module. So out of three, we're going to go out of three into the cutoff of, I should be, no, I'm going to do that into one. So it matches, actually, that's just not going to work. doesn't matter. Whatever. Three. So out of three into the VCA of one. Oh, but I've, I need to, okay, how do I do this again? It's like hold and then it's like the top one and the bottom one or something. I don't know how to wipe the CV information. I'm just going to put some CV information into it. Apologies, everybody. There we go. There's this cool function that's on the Quadrax, which is um, it's like a, it's like a LFO that kind of it goes like it 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 pulses, and you can change the speed. Some things going on. So I've also got this other clicky sound. I think that clicky sound is the. So at this point, it's like I've done so many things that I've got movement and I've got sound and things are doing other things, but 
I don't really know what's going on. And sometimes I like that, like especially with more experimental music, I suppose. It's nice to just get a bit lost in it. And um, and just experiment. Um, so I'm using the um, clouds. That's being a, that's the pitched up version of it. And I've got the, the VCA is doing its thing. And now I want to change the, the tone of uh, the, sorry, I should say the, um, the notation information of the um, oscillator. So we got a bit, get it even a bit more going. So, uh, where, have I got? where are you going? I think it's five I'll do. So five can be... Alright. So. Five is going to be... Still um, working out the, the uh, plats and the notation and what's going to be happening with that. So that's on five. All right, let's go. So it's starting to get a little bit more complicated. A little bit more interesting. Let's slow down that waving. Also this... Just programming in some notes. Alright. But we want to make this more lush, so let's chuck some reverb. Turn the knobs until it sounds good. Now we're starting to sound quite nice. Like I was saying before, if I like how something sounds, and you know, I've just had this whole process in, of doing this I want to sample it, so my squid sample has a has an input. I'm going to take the output, the direct output. So we're not going to get it with the effects, but it doesn't really matter. All right. So I'm just getting a, I've, I've gone the output of the dub mix, they've got direct out, so each channel has its own output. I'm taking this and I'm going to sample it and then I'm going to loop that up and change the pitch and kind of, yeah, put it through the Ujo filter and see how we go. So I'm just going to record like a random snippet. So yeah, that's like 
You can only do 11 seconds, that's fine by me. Now I'm just going to stop the sequence. It's going to keep going though, because... That should be good. I'll wait till all of... Oh, all of this is good, and we're going to try this out now. All right, so here's my sample. That's okay. I might just change the pitch. Let's change the bit rate of it. And let's just, so it's on number one. I'm just gonna, um, yeah. So that's kind of, I've changed the pitch, I've changed the bit rate of the sample and it's kind of, I've got something else going on now and I mean all of that waving and all everything I've modulated, I changed the pitch and the bit rate and it's automatically it's like almost something completely new, so which is cool, so I'll add it with the original. You know, a little bit of playing around with the speed and it's kind of like to taste, so. And I want to put that through the filter. Which is modulating in reverse to the, uh, the, um, the filter from, the filter modulation from the, from the, uh, from the Platz, os the Platz oscillator. something that's kind of sounding quite cool and like I just had no idea like I had no idea I was gonna start making this but now I've got something that's you know we've got something that's going it's being modulated in a way that's like it, you can't really hear a rhythm you can't really hear like a repetitive this is when the song this is when the, the sample starts you know this is kind of like this organic like wavy thing and it's like just yeah I don't know, I think that sounds pretty cool what do you reckon you into it you know maybe I'll record this uh, into a jam or maybe this will just be the bass and then and then what I could do is I could start to turn it into some club track again. <laughs> logic module but you know maybe I want something in there that's a little bit more predictable I want a clap that's gonna boom clap boom clap not club warehouse yeah that's right and so I'm going to find a sample because I've got another eight samples here. I'm using one sample. I'm like hardly using this, you know, this to its full potential. I've got, I've got my Tyco. I could, I could chuck in the Tyco as the snare. That would work. Let's do that. Good, let's, why don't we change the tempo? But maybe... 
Maybe we want it a bit deeper. I can't wait to jam with you either. Hey, this has been really great. I've noticed there's been enough people kind of watching for, for me to keep going. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I mean, you, ch you got it on the TV. Let me know. Should I do some more of these? Should I, you know, should I like maybe just play around and make some stuff and then and then bring you in once I've actually sort of established something a bit more? Let us know what you think. You know what? I haven't even... Yeah, that's that's a good idea. But I mean, the thing is, the thing is, uh, Camillo, that there actually are a lot of YouTube tutorials where people focus on specific things and do it in a really, really good way. I mean, I could still do that. And I think that's, I mean, I don't know how much longer we're going to be in lockdown for, but apparently end of October, but I doubt it. Um, yeah. Let me know what you've got out of this and if anything at all. And why don't I just add in like a bass line that's like... Oh, thank you. I mean, I don't really know much about musical theory, but like, basically for me, it's like, if it sounds good, then I'm into it. But I can like... No worries, Jackson. I hope you are, yeah, got something out of it. Yeah, logic modules are cool. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, Sequential switches are cool. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I use is pretty like bread and butter, pretty, pretty, you know, uh, easy to like understand. Um, if anyone has any other questions, like hit me up and, and let me know. Um, always happy to help out, but. Yeah, I mean, the dub mix is good for live. There's, I mean, it's really big. It's like, it takes up a lot of space. There's a module called a Mutamix, a Intelligent Mutamix, which I've been uh, interested in actually getting. Um, oh, thanks, Camilo. I'll just keep it going for another 15 minutes, I suppose. I think that, that's a pretty good, pretty good run. That's three hours of, you know, whatever. <laughs> And so, with my um, sequence, I haven't really gone into too much depth with the sequencer. It would be nice. I'll tell you what would be really cool. If I had, like, a, um, a camera that was, like, on my head or my chest and you can sort of see what I'm looking at, I might do that with next time around. I might get myself a little mini little mini USB web, webcam and, and, and give that a crack. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, there's, um, what I can do is I can just have, uh, and what I might do is, um, you can have some like,
you can have lots, like it's very easy to make the patterns on this really complicated. Like I'm just making really, really simple, really simple patterns, but you can really like flesh these out. It always changes, Jackson. Like sometimes some of the tracks I've made are just straight up stereo recordings and I haven't been able to beat them. Um, and some of them I just like track everything individually, but I find that, I don't know, there's something about some of the modules I use that they create quite a lot of noise and the noise floor is really high. So if I record a straight stereo out, it's gonna sound a bit nicer because it's got less noise than this accumula accumulative noise that's happening happening from from multi-tracking all of these um, different parts. And also like more and more, I'm just like, I love jamming. And I think for me, it's like, that's where my heart lies is in uh, improvisation and, and catching those moments. And I think it's just a process of like, jamming and jamming and jamming and jamming and hoping that you know and out the outcome is the best and i think with all of this modulation that i've got going on here and you know dynamic i can kind of create something that sounds like a fully realized song and it's more just about picking or choosing a section that sounds the best for me um I guess I'll uh, continue on the jam and let's try and do a little 15 minute thing with all of the elements that I've got at the moment. I think I'm just gonna call it now. I'm just gonna jam this out, this track that I've just made for the next 15 minutes. Thank you so much for jumping in. Uh, there is a PayPal donate button underneath. No pressure, but like, you know, if you uh, enjoyed what you what you heard, um, show us some love. Um, I might I might um, do this again. I don't know. I was thinking about just doing little broadcasts every Sunday same time and they can always just be different and a bit freestyle um let me know what you think and thanks so much everyone for uh jumping in it's been actually quite fun yeah Yeah, big big shout out to everyone who's jumped in. I mean, I really like, at, at times I felt like, I don't know, maybe it was a little bit boring, <laughs> but sometimes you just got to get through the boring parts to get to the fun parts. Can't all be fun, you know? Big love to everybody. Stay safe out there. I hope you're feeling all right. Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it. That's okay, Magic magic Muggles. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm just, I think it's safe to say that I'm gonna try and do a little broadcast every Sunday.
How funny does my hand look? It's like it's connected. Oh, that's so weird. It must have been like that the whole time. Anyway. Um, I'm going to head out at a... Well, I'm going to head off at five. But yeah, thanks again. I appreciate everyone uh, coming by and spending some time in the uh, Modula Den. <laughs> Magic Muggles. Appreciate it. Next time I'll um I'll get the chat box in the screen. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. And um, see you next Sunday, I suppose. I'll see how I go. And look at this mess. It's just everywhere. You know, I like to be uh, neat. I like to be neat. Um, but these things happen. All right. See you later.